comfortable. Welcome to the Cube. This is the first for us, John. Inside the Cube. Intel. Inside the Cube. Intel. No one from Intel. Not in we're inside a lot of stuff, but I don't think we've ever been inside Intel the Cube. Intel inside. We try right. to get Intel in the Cube multiple <laughs> times. They have not returned our phone calls. Well, Former Intel. Pat Gelsinger has been on three times. Oh, uh, there you go. Well, <laughs> Pat is a, a mentor of mine. He so. says he takes a, he does an Intel bong before he goes to sleep every night. Is that right? <laughs> <laughs> Do we have that live we on have the that Cube. That on you TV. have yeah, Pat yeah. doing the bong? Well, no, no, no just, just talking about doing it. Oh, okay. an Intel bong. I think John said it. I would pay money to hear Pat do the bong. <laughs> John said bong, it bong, probably bong. helps him sleep at night. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> uh, so what is the, the Intel data center group? Uh, right. Share with our audience. Well, Intel is organized into uh, you know several different business groups. And recently, about less than a year ago, we actually formed the data center group, which is a merge of our server platforms group, uh, where Intel has been working on Xeon processors in the server platform for over a decade. And uh, our data, our storage group, which is what I run uh, for the, my boss, Kirk Skalgen, who runs the data center group, and um, our networking uh, logic group. And all three of those uh, divisions form uh, the data center group. And it's because we believe that, and you can sort of see it from the VSP announcement today, that storage, networking, and, and compute, or servers, are actually becoming very uh, converged in both architecture and in, and in different, different ways are being used, you know, and, and everything's being just sort of distributed and cloudy and, uh, and, um, and there's just a lot of innovation, as you can see by some of these really ridiculously awesome mergers going yeah. on around with great prices, right? Yeah, well, so you guys obviously are, are just recently had a big acquisition, software acquisition, and, uh, but it's, it's known in Silicon Valley that you guys have been high on the whole software bandwagon for some time, mm -hmm. uh, obviously, and you guys are known for the chips. So talk about what's going on with the software side of the business on the integration, because you guys are bundling software into the, into, the, into, the, into the hardware. How far has that come, and where are you, are you guys today? And, and what does that mean for your IT? Market? Yeah, well, I mean, uh, uh, yeah, software, I mean, you, you know, uh, not done, but the McAfee uh, announcement is a, one of our biggest, uh, is uh, obviously a growing vector for the Intel Corporation. Um, you know, we're still a building block supplier in the end uh, of on the on the silicon side and on the solution side. So, you know, we make chips primarily, uh, and uh, but you know, we we it was, we've been looking at uh, growth. You know, it turns out that there's quite a lot of value we think we can bring by um, adding certain key features in software that goes with those chips. You know, kind of extending that software with silicon features. And that's that I think is a uh, a opportunity for us to add more value, um, but you know we'll do it you know a, in a way that's very open. You know us we have all sorts of industry standards we drive too, and so you'll see us you know anchored on delivering great chips and and the architecture that goes with that. Uh, we've been building, you know, driver software and and uh, like we have a, a RAID software that goes with our our upcoming chips uh, uh, for servers. Uh, those types of building block softwares that are tightly linked to our chips. And uh, and now, of course, we have some other areas where or security, which we think is a huge uh, um, uh, area of growth, is is uh, one of the areas you'll see us focus on. You know, in addition to manageability, uh, manageability, security, and performance, energy efficient performance nowadays is really a big part of Intel. So, other than Moore's law, what's driving your 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 business? And again, how does that affect your IT? Yeah, well, I mean, uh, Moore's law is a religion with us. It's our culture. It's really hard, by the way, to make happen to double those transistors every two years. Is, Thank you. Is very. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually quite. It's kind of not easy. Uh, um, but what's driving, like, I'll give you an example of what's driving my business today is just this explosion of digital data. You know, Facebook and, uh, you know, your show and everything, you know, is, um, is a big deal for online. And, uh, I mean, look at the IDC report that just came out called the Digital Universe Study. And every year they come out with this and every year they up their numbers. But last year in May they said that there were almost 800 exabytes yeah. of data, digital data out there, which is a, a 10 with 18 zeros after We're it. We're talking zettabytes these days. Yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah, and, and I didn't know what a zettabyte was until recently, right? And so now, you know, uh, they think it's going to grow 44x, which is actually faster than Moore's Law. Uh, and, uh, and, and by 2020, and 10 years from now, they think it'll be 35, 35 zettabytes. Yeah. Uh, so that's definitely going to grow our business. It's a big deal. I mean, we, th we think, obviously think our show's a big deal. Thanks for pointing that out. And, uh, but video, <laughs> and we run out of storage all video, the time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we do. Yeah, this is 1080p stuff. video. We're putting out monster files. I mean, this is like, um, like, um, like, can't believe how much storage is required. 
Um, but the question is, is that there's a big debate for the people who don't aren't in the business around understanding what's going on with virtualization. Palmer, and when Palmer Ritz comes out, quotes the IDC study and says there's more servers being virtualized shipments, more virtual shipments uh, mm -hmm. in servers than actually physical. Mm -hmm. the, the average person says, "Oh, that's bad for Intel." Mm -mm. So, so yeah. clarify that because you know we've said publicly that's a great stat and gets people juiced up, but really the data is not going away. The machine footprint is still continuing to grow. But just clarify that that the fallacy or the artificial debate that's there. Yeah, yeah. Actually, uh, we're big fans of virtualization, and we built actual core technologies into our processors uh, and into our chipsets to virtualize both the the processor itself and help it run faster and better, and into into the um, into the I/O. Uh, and uh, you know, the, from our perspective, it's just you know. Uh, even though you know we love Moore's law, we'd love to solve everybody a processor per you know uh, usage model. Uh, you know it's it actually makes a lot of sense. And so uh, you know if you can consolidate your server infrastructure and run several virtual machines onto a device, um, you know you get great performance and and uh, and, and you save a lot of power. And uh, for us, you know, we think of it as, well, we'll just sell a better processor, right? So instead of selling a simpler processor, people tend to buy our dual processing or our four processing, our quad sockets, you know, not quad core, but quad sockets, 16 cores, 18 core, 20 core solutions to run these, you know, Oracle databases, SAP, all these very uh, high-end things. Uh, now, you know, virtualization does have some limits right now. Um, you know, it's really being used for what they, some people call tier two, uh, some sarcastic people call it crap locations, but, you know, tier two, you know, uh, apps, uh, simple apps, and, uh, and we think that it's going to have some penetration limits. So you might run five virtual machines, you know, or, uh, on, an, on a server, and you'll run it for your tier two apps. But the high performance stuff, you know, the, the databases, it seems like they still want you know, yeah, uh, very, very SAP direct access, Oracle, right? That directly, that production. So, yeah. So, so as you as you put, put Jim more cores into the equation, and maybe Flash also comes in yes. in, into play. Um, what does that mean for I/O and and connected to what you're seeing today with this Hitachi VSP? Talk about that a little bit. Yeah. Well, so I mean, the the key thing about Flash in a in a storage application is uh, data caching, and uh, they, some people call it tiering. Uh, and so uh, today. Uh, before the world of, uh, of NAND and, and non-volatile storage, the fastest way you could get access to the disk, to the data, was to concatenate hundreds of disks and put the data literally on the outside of those disks so that when it rotates <laughs> around, you get the highest centrifugal motion. That was speed, right? And uh, obviously, you know, you're, you're, think, you're talking about 200 IO ops on a disk. This is Intel geeky speak, I apologize. Yeah. But, but you know, you'd put a, an SSD out there and you get 10,000, 20,000, 30,000 IOPS. It's just, you know, ridiculously different and better. And so it's being driven into the data center as a performance tier uh, anchored on uh, transactional database things. Uh, but you know, once you have it, um, it's useful for a lot of other things. And you can see from the Hitachi now, the VSP announcement today, it's sort of integral to the architecture, which we think is essential because it's hard for an IT person to sort of on the fly dynamically manage all this tiering. And it's really better if the storage box sort of owns that problem and sort of abstracts them away from it and does it logically based on their knowledge of the data. Uh, but we expect non-volatile storage to be uh, driven, you know, very, very steeply into uh, certainly external storage boxes, but into the data center in, in general. So you're a USPV current customer, is that right? Or are you a current USPV customer, Hitachi customer of their previous platform? or? I'm sorry, I the don't know US, if I understand USPV, the USPV, the, the predecessor? Oh, the, the predecessor? VSP, yeah, I actually yeah. don't know. Yeah, okay. I actually don't know. All right. So Intel, so that makes a lot of sense. So just summarize the question for the folks out there is that Intel actually is interested in virtualization, enabling virtualization, because oh, you yeah. sell more high-end processors and more stuff. Yeah. And just to tie back your earlier point, you guys have IP, specific IP in, in the silicon mm -hmm. and you're going to wrap your software into that you see that as that major yeah thing. yeah and yeah. you know the data center is exploding you know I and mean, we're we're you know we're already in 90 ish percent of the, the servers uh, run on on xeon uh for the target segments we identify but you may not know this we're actually by the end of this year we're probably going to be 70 percent of the storage boxes out there we'll be running on intel processors well, who's left that doesn't run on intel i'm trying to well, uh, well so we try to make everybody even happy, oracle's, you know? of even oracle's running on intel right, so, yeah. most so, part, the, right. so the, the, the kind of the wild card question is um okay, people are talking about this is that people are building their own facebook as you were brought up facebook and facebook's making all their own stuff google makes their own machines mm -hmm. i mean facebook granted software they're building but you know yeah. there's a trend to you know hey I, intel who 
AMD, who's got the better lower power, you know, mm -hmm. better, better everything. So, um, talk about that opportunity and what's happening around that. Is it is it homebrew like stuff or is it real? Yeah. Um, where's the market at on that? Well, you know, it's, yes. Uh, so, if you had shown my top ten customer list in the data center group uh, five years ago and today, you wouldn't see guys. And it, now, for us, uh, we we sell the chips and we sell them into OEM platforms. So this is HP and Dell and IBM and lots and lots of other companies who are building our products and then selling them off to the Facebooks and the Googles. We don't we don't necessarily do chip directly yeah. to them as a business model, uh, but. Um, you know, th that being said, they, they tend to want to strip it down and do a lot of their own stuff in software. So they might buy just a, a basic server and then do a lot of cool things in software with it. But they'll buy a ton of them. And matter of fact, our top 10 list of customers includes, if we measure it by consumption, it measure, includes Amazon and Google and, yeah. and these types of fuss that are in our top 10. And they weren't five years ago, 10 years ago. They didn't exist, right? Yeah, that purpose built was a big message from Larry Ellison at Oracle Open World, this notion of integrating hardware and software. And as he said, my friend Steve Jobs, um, referring to Steve's with you know Apple strategy, mm -hmm. uh, but Oracle's more of an incumbent. But is that the trend? More appliances, more purpose-built hardware, um, or is it just a fad or a specific? Well, I don't space? know. I think I think it's uh, if the, certainly a trend to keep trying to take particular bottlenecks and pain points, and there's just constantly new bottlenecks and pain points in the data center, and build accelerators to to solve them. But actually, I think the thing that we're seeing is what some people call uh, convergence. Right, where the server, the networking, and the storage uh, boxes are concatenated together, and they're a common management solution for them, and they're even sometimes sold as a module, pre-tested, right? pre-tested, <laughs> configured, whatever. And so that convergence, we, you know, we think you know is sort of logical for IT people because they they touch it yeah. one time. But we also think that people want to have best of breed, right? So they want to be able to interoperate all these things, right? And they want to be able to select to whoever they want for that convergence. And um, so you know, I think that we. You know, we being a chip supplier, our goal is to make sure our architecture works great in any of those environments, and it's quite a quite a uh, deal. I mean, our Xeon chips are very different from our client chips, right? And of course, we have the atoms for the low end, right? And so, uh, we we spend a lot of time and energy trying to figure out how to get specific technologies to these to these different boxes together. And, and Oracle is a great partner of ours. Um, you know, uh, they just announced their new storage solution is using Intel architecture. Yeah, no spark inside. And um, and um, <laughs> You know, uh, so we consider that to be a, a good thing. You know, uh, and uh, but I, I think that's that's where I think uh, you'll see it happen. You'll see, yes, definitely appliances, but I just think you also see this kind of converged platforms uh, wrapped by an amazing amount of software. Well, this digital footprint idea you mentioned earlier is pretty big. I mean, the storage of digital media, you know, content being one of them. It's mind-boggling to think that you know my Facebook photos will be there forever, and we have a historical record of digital content. Uh, will that be the case, do you think, or, or will there be a trash pile of uh, recycled uh, components, or will there will the photos be around forever? Um, it's a little outside my expertise, frankly. I don't think I've ever really studied it. Um, uh, I think the, the 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 world's been fo so focused on trying to keep up with the explosion of the data right now. Frankly, no one that I know of is having a hot top of mind conversation about. Uh, archiving and what you should get rid of. <laughs> like right now, I'm just like trying to run to keep up with the number yeah, of yeah. pictures, you know, being created. My, I took my son to a university tour. He grabbed my uh, phone and he took a shot of the, the, the you know, this, the school mascot in front of him. And he had it posted to Facebook before I even got my phone seconds. back from it, right? <laughs> you know? Yeah, thanks, Dad. You know, and, and it was like, it was amazing, right? And that's the type of stuff yeah. that's going on. So, um, I don't know. I. I think it's going to be um, a lot of everything, and who, kn who knows how it's going to turn out. Good. Well, we're here with David Tui, who's the uh, general manager of the Intel Data Center Group, um, talking about crystal ball, futures, Great current. to have you on the Cube. You're yeah. the first Intel uh, uh, person on the Cube. We've been trying to get someone from Intel for a couple months now. Oh, well, we won't hide and from you, uh, I guess. We're not. Yeah. Uh, well, they're right down the street. I live in Palo Alto. Well, he's oh, in yeah, Massachusetts, well, so. Yeah. Um, yeah, well, great. We love the, Intel. The world is coalescing around you know big, big, th big waves like uh, like virtualization and and Intel's at the center of that. So uh, it's great to great to have you on. Appreciate you sharing your thoughts with us. Yeah, thank you. Wow, I don't even know what a dark cloud looks like. Um, uh, but I'll tell you what we're doing with security. And, you know, 
we kind of feel like it's our, our uh, 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 something we should take very seriously because it's a worldwide concern, right? And uh, people want their privacy and security. Uh, and uh, so what we've been building, for example, into the Xeon processors is something we call trusted execution technology, which is an ability to securely boot uh, to a known virtual machine or OS, uh, the the PC, and you've seen some, you'll probably see some white papers on it. RSA uh, and Archer announced uh, a white paper back in January. Right. And the idea is that you know, would you rather have a, a frankly, you know, to be simple, a secure cloud or an insecure cloud? Right. It seems like a simple question to answer. Right. But that that core technology is when you when you boot the OS, you don't want anybody in the middle. Right. Between you, when you get that system started, when you get that OS up and running, and it takes control. And uh, so trusted execution technologies are already a technology, when, and we've been investing in that for several years, actually. Uh, and now as the software system is starting to catch up to it. But those are the types of things we're trying to do. Uh, we, we don't put crypto in our chips. We put, like, accelerators and building blocks. Uh, but we do put security features in there. And, uh, and we will continue to do that because, um, you know, uh, the attacks are, you know, they're big, they're escalating, and we all know, right? And, 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 you know, they're subversive sometimes. And so we feel like it's something that we should, we should offer. A lot of bad guys out there.